this video, we will discuss how to log in to a network switch and change your local IP address. We are going to cover these three main topics here. How to change an IP address. Two, how to use ping and IP config to troubleshoot connection issues. And finally, we will discuss how to move the IP address of your switch to your network. So let's get started. To log in to a network switch, you will need to have an ethernet cable connected from the switch to your computer. And you need to have your IP address in the same range as that switch. Our default login is 192.168.2.1. For your computer to talk to that switch, its IPv4 address must be in the 192.168.2.x range, where X is any value between 2 and 254. If the devices are outside of the range, then they can't communicate. We will ping the switch to determine if our devices are in range. Ping sends a message to a device to see if it is connected to the network or the internet. If the two devices can communicate, you will get a reply. If not, you will get an error message. To use ping, type CMD in the search bar, and then the command prompt will open. In the command prompt, type ping followed by the switch IP address. In our case, that is 192.168.2.1. We're pinging our 192.168.2.1 with 32 bytes of data. We can make this larger or smaller, but for this video, we're just gonna focus on a basic ping. So the next thing we see is the request timed out. That means we couldn't reach the switch. Before going any further, consult your user manual to ensure that you have the correct address for your specific model. Most of our switches have the 192.168.2.1 interface, but some older models and AV switches have a 192.168.0.1 address. If your switch has a different address, repeat the steps above, but replace the address with your switch or device address throughout the tutorial. After running the ping command, we know we can't talk to the device because we get the request timed out message. We now know that the switch is either not connected to our network physically, meaning isn't plugged in, or our IP is out of range. The next thing we should do is check that there are link lights on our switch and computer. If we see a green light on both sides, then we're plugged in and we should go to the next step. Next, let's check our IP address using the IP config command. This command will give us a list of our adapter settings and network configuration settings. We will focus only on the IPv4 information to identify our IP address. To reiterate, our IP needs to be in the range of 192.168.2.x, where X is any number between 2 and 254. So now, using ipconfig, we can see that our IPv4 settings are outside of the range of the switch. So let's go on to our next step, which is changing our computer's IP address in order to communicate with the switch. First, on your search bar, type control panel. Next, go to the network and sharing center. On this page, you will see options for all of your adapters. We are going to click on Ethernet 7. On your computer, this might be different, but click on the Ethernet connection connected to the switch. Remember, for our adapter to talk to the switch at 192.168.2.1, this last number will have to be in range. One more thing to note is that if another device uses the same IP address, the network won't let you connect. So you have to pay attention to the Windows alerts and make sure you don't assign this device to an IP already in use. Here in the IPv4 settings, we will change our IP address for our Ethernet connection to 192.168.2.20. And we're going to use a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We're going to leave the DNS server settings blank, where we're going to click on validate settings upon exit. This last setting is very important because it means when we hit OK, these settings will go into effect immediately.
So we can now log into the switch. To do that, type 192.168.2.1 into your browser and hit enter. You may get an alert saying this page is dangerous. Click proceed anyway when you see this alert because the traffic is taking place between you and the switch on a physical wire on your local network and therefore is not a security concern. Your login is going to be admin and your password is either the serial number or 1234. On some of our older devices, the password is admin and the login is also admin. And if you ever forget the password, pull down the reset button for 20 seconds or until the device reboots to reset your password to the default value. Once you are inside the web interface, you want to do three essential things. One, change the default password. Make sure your default password is something strong and hard to guess. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is change the switch IP address. You will need to do this if you would like to move your switch to your network, or if you have multiple Intelnet switches, you will need an individual IP to configure each. You can do this by changing this setting here in the quick setting menu. The last thing you will want to do is save the configuration. The exact procedure for this differs based on your switch model, so please consult your user manual. For most of our switches, the process of doing this involves going into the system and clicking Save Configuration. On some of our devices, you can also download this file. When you are done making changes, go back into the IPv4 settings and enable Obtain an IP address automatically, and you'll be all set. So in this video, we discussed some of the basics of switch maintenance. You should now be able to do the following. Use the ping and IP config command to troubleshoot network issues. Change your IPv4 settings on a Windows computer. Change your default password and default IP address. And lastly, save the configuration. Thank you guys so much for your time. If you have any additional questions about switches or switch configuration, please feel free to contact us here at Intelnet Technical Support by either filling out a ticket or directly at 888-844-2636. Thank you guys and have a great day.